do I'm half crazy for a love for you it won't be a stylish marriage I can't afford a carrot Emergency, please. This is an emergency. What? Oh, uh, heart, heart attack, I think. Oh, 501 Crescent Street. Uh, uh, and, and, uh, 555-9090. Five, five, five. Long. Yes, yes. Oh, please hurry. I called Ted. Grandma's on the phone. She's crying. Mom? Wait, Mom. Wait, I, I can't hear you. Oh, God. Tell me the hospital. What hospital? I'm leaving right now, Mom. Right now. Dad had a heart attack. Who is he? I don't know yet. Do you want me to come with you? No. Call Wendy and tell her to get over to Crestview Hospital. He's in emergency. Be careful. Mom, Mom I, I think with a heart attack, you, you either die right away or you're okay, so... He'll probably be okay. Will the security officer please go to 133 West? Will the security officer please go to 133 West? We were singing in the car, like we always do. Oh, you know, we've sung thousands of miles of songs all over the country in every state in the Union except uh, Hawaii and um, Alaska and some of the New England states. 
He was feeling fine. Wendy's here. Oh. Michael? He's in the cardiac care unit. He was singing in the car. We're waiting for the doctor. He was feeling fine. He was singing in a strong voice. Come sit down, Mom. We thought our hearts were strong. You know, we've had our troubles, my stomach and... But at least our hearts are strong, we'd say. But now... Uh. Just have to wait, Mom. Right around 15% damage to the heart, and that will have to heal, so it's going to be very slow going for a while. Does he smoke? No. Good. How long will it take? Five or six weeks with the right kind of exercise in very small doses, a special diet. He is retired, isn't he? Oh, he hasn't painted a house in seven years. He does small jobs once in a while. Well, no more painting, no stairs, no driving. never so frightened. Never. Scared the hell out of me, too. <laughs> Mike and Wendy are here. Good. They can just say hello and goodbye. Hello, Dad. Welcoming committee, huh? What, Dad? I've been away. Welcome back. I've been to heaven. Oh, Daddy. I have. I have. I heard a voice say to me, Name, please. And I said, Theodore Long. And then the voice said to me, Long, too early and you're in the wrong place. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> He's not senile, Dr. Russo. That's his sense of humor. I understand, but it is time to go. Bye, Dad. See you later, Dad. Just one more minute. Of course. Phew. It was close. You think he cared that I was there? Of course, Wendy. I don't know why I still let it bother me. He cared. You take your mom home? Yeah. I care. Dr. Wittenberg. Dr. Wittenberg, outside call. Dr. Wittenberg, outside call. I think Ted looked a lot better today. Yes, he's getting his color back. that joke. There's always a joke in his eyes. Mike has that too. Yes, he does. Are you all right? Every time I climb those stairs out there, I remember. I'll make us some coffee. Oh, it's
have to leave here because of the stairs? I don't know. We'll never find a rent as low as this. But it isn't the rent at this place. It's got 20 years of our lives in it. It comforts us. You may not have to move. Oh, in my garden. Every time I plant something, I bring away some soil on my gloves. But then I always feel that I leave part of me there. So, after 20 years, my garden's like a mirror. Now, don't think I'm crazy. The old lady's gone soft. <laughs> I don't think that. When it's all stand up and fresh, then that's how I feel. And sometimes I feel just as weedy and droopy. The garden is her, pretty and neat. How can she leave that? After 20 years, I mean, who stays in one place 20 years anymore? They have friends in that neighborhood. Well, this is the only way they can stay there. Absolutely no more stair climbing for Dan. Let's see that again. It's got a good guarantee. I'm sure it can be attached to that staircase. What about the price? Rent's for 60 a month, but that can be applied to the purchase price. 1300 ooh. I should have kept him out of that paint store business. How could you? He believed in it. Well, small businesses today are casualties. Dime by the thousand. Yeah, but it took all his savings. His social security just barely gets him by. Looks okay to me. We'll go half and half. Well, no, no, I... It's always half and a half, Mike, okay? Okay. Cold? No, it's nice. What's that smell, Jasmine? Well, I think it's our cat. <laughs> Mike? We can't afford to pay for half of that chair. What? Al's not getting a salary now, strictly commission. We're in debt. Why didn't he say so? He can't. He's ashamed. Am I some stranger he has to lie to? He didn't lie. He said he had a big sale ready. All right, he's protecting himself. Am I his enemy? Yes. You and Dad, he knows what you think of him. That's not true. I can give you one payment, that's all. And you won't say anything to Al? Of course not. God, I hate the way everything comes down to dollars and cents. We're talking about Dad's life. If I could, I'd be there to carry him up and down the stairs. Just like I did Scotty. What? I used to carry my son up the stairs before he could walk. Now it's my father down there at the bottom waiting for me to... Isn't it crazy? I mean, I... Dad used to carry me up the stairs. It's all turned upside down. Grandma. Hi, Scott. Thank you. Yes, Scott, I'll do it. Thank you, thank you. Hi, kid. How are you doing, sweetheart? Is it ready? Take it slow. Well, there it is. How about that? I know it works because I tried it. It's fun. Look, Dad. 
swivel, see? Easy access. You just get settled and then press that. I'll go up and meet you. Come on, Dad. Ted? I feel like a baby in a stroller. It looks more like a helicopter. Helicopter? Yeah, a little one-man job. Contact. <laughs> Contact. I can't make up my mind. <laughs> Turn it into a toy. Come on, Emma. Get on my lap. Oh! <laughs> now it's a big toy. <laughs> Scotty, you're next. <laughs> Morning, Paula. Morning, boss. What are we looking for today? Looks like we're on a merry-go-round. We're interviewing again for public relations executive. Oh, I thought we hired Mr. What's-his-name? Mr. Lester didn't work out. Why not? I don't know. Something awfully sudden. Mr. Cole wants to see you about that. Hmm. Sounds like trouble, right? Sounds like it. Now, Lester was perfect for the job. I wonder what could have happened. I don't know. Something terminal. But Mr. Cole, how was I to know he was dead? And he was sitting right across from me, smiling. His form was all filled out. I said, Mr. Lester, you've got the job. Then I wheeled him into the public relations office, and behind his desk. You know, it took him two weeks before they caught on and fired him. Poor Mr. Lester. How'd he take it? Never said a word. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once I hired a man who couldn't speak English as a... Oh, you told me about that. You know, once I hired a secretary who showed me no respect. What did you do with her? I married her. That was 16 years ago. Now I got another one. Would you get that? I'm doing my nails. <laughs> Mr. Long's office. Those drivers? If he's too old to function, why doesn't he just lie down and give up? Oh, they were not thinking that. And if they were, to hell with them. Up you go. this, Ted. Please. Ted, don't you want to get well? Ted. Yeah. It's your mom. Oh, thanks. Hi. How you doing? What's wrong? I know. I... I know he's not supposed to... No, Mom. I don't think he does it for spite. Is it? Mr. Long's office. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, he is in. Just a minute. It's taking him a long time, and he... 
It's Mr. Cole. I'll call him right back. Yeah, I'll talk to him. I'll, I'll, I'll drop by after work. Sure, that's okay. Try and relax. Goodbye. You look tired. You could have said I look great. I know I'm tired. You look great. I know. Oh. <laughs> Is this a business lunch? What do you mean? A cocktail, sir? Uh, no, I'll have a glass of white wine, too, please. I mean, are we going to talk about Mom and Dad? Can you take them? You're kidding. They can't stay in that apartment. Why? Because Dad won't use the chair? Oh, I got him to use the chair, but it keeps blowing fuses. The building needs rewiring. Look, I've been over it a thousand times. They can't make it by themselves anymore. Then what with the mortgage on the house, the payments on the cars, the furniture? I can't afford to hire them a housekeeper. Will you take them? It just wouldn't work. Not with Dad and Al. He hates Al. Oh, he doesn't hate Al. He doesn't hate anybody. Oh, yeah. Tell me all about Dad. You know him so much better. He's always making sarcastic remarks about Al. No grandchildren, all the different jobs he's had, my having to work. What do you mean, I know him so much better? Father and son. A man and his boy child. Oh, come on, face it. I was an afterthought, an accident. Wendy, you don't believe that. Well, there are some years between us. What is that supposed to prove? Look, Dad never had much time for his family. But when he did, he'd come and get you, and off he'd go. That was a long time ago, Wendy. He still does it. He'll give me a quick hello, make a few remarks about my husband, and then he's off to be with you. Is that why you won't take them? Don't say that to me. Getting back at him now and he needs you? He doesn't need me. He needs a place to live. I'd let them live at our place, except everybody'd be miserable. I'm trying to think of them, too. Damn it. Would you care to look at a menu now, sir? Oh, later. Thank you. Forget it. Al and I are working very hard to stay together. It just wouldn't work. Maybe with Mom. What? Maybe we could take Mom for a while. You mean split them up? How can you even think such a thing? We're talking about two people who haven't spent a night apart in how many years? Don't you know who you're talking about? Where are you going? I'm not hungry anymore. Thanks for lunch. Wendy! I need some paper. Well, I haven't gone through the ads yet. It's all right. I'll throw my shirt in. <laughs> well, take the sports section. Reading it. Mom called again today. How are they? Not good. Dad just sits for hours, she says. No TV, no radio, no reading. Nothing. Are you trying to make me sick? I guess I am. Say so what? That they should come live with us. Here? Where? You mean for good? Well, until Grandpa feels better or I get a good raise. I don't know. Let's think about it. What about Wendy? She has room. She'll take Mom, but not Dad. Oh, my God. Well, where would they stay? Oh, my room, huh? There really isn't any other way, is there? It isn't just a question of space. Can we have them in our lives every day, every night? Well, it's a good thing we like them.
Could you come in here a minute, please? Dear, I thought we could close off the dining room with some drapes or... or and, uh, store the furniture. And bring in your bed and... Could I put my posters up? Sure. Anything you want. It's a nice central location, close to the fridge. Oh, you're so I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I've got it. Hello. Oh, hello, Mike. It's Mike. All right. How are you two? Scott all right? Mike says that Scott's joined the Crusades. <laughs> your, your father and I are going to do what? Oh, Michael. That wouldn't be right. I mean... What? But... Oh, Michael. I just don't know. What? Don't excite yourself. Michael's asking us to move in with him. We'd be intruding, wouldn't we? Are you sure? You'd throw us out in a week. Dad says you'd throw us out in a week. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> we'll think it over. Right. Yes. Wendy's place and ours, we should be able to store just about everything. I know we're going to have to sell something. We'll see. Wish I could give you a hand. You want me to put that in? No, no, I'll take care of this. Oh, that's the coin collection I told you about. Yeah. Pieces of history here. Uh, wow, 1802. Yeah. History of the family, history of the whole country in these coins. Look at these two. Scotty used to call those the cowboy coins. Yeah. He'd put them in his jeans and walk around so serious. I'd better get the last of the boxes. Yeah. Okay, sure. Scott, I'll be in the backyard. We've got lots of good soil for transplanting. I know we can't dig up even half of it. Well, take as much as you want and we'll make room for it. Oh, good. Here's Dave. Where should I start, Mrs. Long? What's first, Emma? Uh, I can't dig it up, Carol. We'll leave it here and uh, Mrs. Nardi will take care of it. And we can come and pick vegetables when... You can help me start a new garden. Tomatoes should go in now. Hello, my ragtime gal. 
send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you'll lose me. Then you'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone and tell me I'm your own. One more time. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart. If you refuse me, honey, you'll lose me. Then you'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone and tell me I'm your own. Oh, I'm your own. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Carol's the one who snores. I do not. Emma doesn't snore. No, she makes a sound like the barking of a dog. <laughs> Every night around midnight, so don't be scared. Okay. <laughs> Isn't he terrible? Mark's just as bad. What are you raised him? <laughs> I take no blame for him. I was raised by gypsies. I was always hoping you'd run away and join the circus. <laughs> Outside the door and listen to their breathing. Uh -huh. Remember when Scotty was first born? He listened to his breathing just to make sure he was okay. Mm -hmm. No, it's my parents I listen to. Come here. I'm coming. Yes, Ted. Um, it's a bit dreary, don't you think? What? I, I mean, uh, this entry in the hallway. Oh. Yes, I guess it is. Well, you know, a little white paint made the eggshell on the walls and ceiling and spark it up an awful lot. I think you're right. Good. I'll get the paint, and I'll have it done in no time. Oh, I... no, Ted. No, you shouldn't paint. What's he want to do now? Well, it's only a one-hour job. What's he talking about? No, I'll get the paint, and you can supervise Mike or Scott, and they'll do it. But look, all it is is this. I mean, it's just like that. But it's, you can't even break a sweat. It's no, just... Ted, please. Hey, you be the supervisor. I keep telling you, if you want to paint, do a landscape. Do a still life. I'm not an artist. I'm a painter. Forty-five minutes at the most. I've tried to interest him in new things, you know, a hobby. Is that a law book? Hmm? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That must be interesting. Well, it's a drudge mostly, but it's just three days a week and a little homework. And uh, the pay isn't bad. I never had an occupation outside of the home. I guess I should have. Just my children and the garden and Mr. Long there. He's a handful. <laughs> what is it you're working on? Oh, just, uh, just copying something for the attorneys. Oh, that must be interesting. What is that man doing? If I can do this, I can paint. I thought you were waving goodbye. What about that activity group in the park? Did you ever look into that? 
They don't play poker. <laughs> I've got the list right here. There are lots of things to do. All you have is your reading and your coin collection, and they're both alone things. I never cared for checkers. Oh, well, there's photography, lawn bowling, arts and crafts, garden club. Emma, you ought to go to that. Well, you come too. What else they got? Oh, oil painting. There, you see. Belly dancing. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so you always buy the top grade seat. The most expensive seat, and you can write this down, is the cheapest seat to buy. Uh, temperature. Uh, minimum temperature, 150 degrees. Maximum, 105. The optimum is about 95. As far as planning goes, you want about, oh, 10 inches apart and maybe 4 inches deep. And then you add more planting soil as needed. I, you always make sure to cover the roots. Now, after that, you add your, your topsoil. On the topsoil, be sure, be sure to compress it around the plant itself. Now, uh, any more questions on corn before we move to tomato? dangerous up there, huh? Mm. Just imagine you're three feet off the ground no matter how high you go. I'm a painter myself. Forty years at it. <laughs> it always worked for me. Just keep thinking that the world is three feet below you. You'd be surprised how it can help your balance. I'll try it. You still painting? No, I retired, went into the paint store business. I didn't last, now I'm just retired. <laughs> I envy you. No, you don't. Mmm. Better than flowers to me. Pardon? I said it. Well, look at that. Grandpa? Hello, Scotty. Who's the pretty lady? Rhonda. Oh. Hello, Rhonda. Hi. <laughs> what do you think of this speed demon here? It's like he grew wheels on his feet. <laughs> I'm as good as he is. Oh. She is. See you later. Hey, uh, when are we going to do that hallway? Soon. Later this afternoon, maybe? I can. Nice meeting you. Carol into a row of snapdragons. Behind that, I'm going to put some herbs. We'll have fresh mint soon. You have good hands for raising things. Plants, children. Come help me dig. Look, Emma, why don't we, we take a ride over to the old neighborhood and see Mrs. Nardi and, and, and Ralph and... Oh, and, and, Ted, I hate to bother Carol again. Well, not Carol, ju just us. <laughs> I'll get our car and I'll drive. The doctor said you shouldn't. Oh, one more little drive before the car is sold? It's one of the few things left that's still mine. One little tiny place I can feel I belong. I want to take my wife for a drive.
Mm. I won't ride with you, Ted. Why not? Can't I be a man anymore? Am I some kind of an old fool who stands around watching people do things and has to be driven here and driven Ted. there? Ted! I... You're alive. Well, what... What is being alive? It's you. That's what's being alive to me. It's you, Ted Long. So don't drive away from me. Will you come and help me dig? We'll plant the mint and uh, we'll put in carrots. I know how you love fresh carrots with your salad. And I have cucumbers to plant and tomatoes. Will you help me? Sure. Sure I will. Of course I will. Now, it says on the form your last school was St. Charles. Is that a high school? And he says, uh, no, reform. <laughs> oh, no. So I said, uh, you been in any trouble since? And he said, Salt, once in a while I get nervous. I slug somebody. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I said, well, sit back, relax, put your feet up. Want me to rub your neck? <laughs> did you rub his neck? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, tell him about the dead PR man. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it's great. Oh, that's really good. Don't come in. Okay, but Scott, you've got to stop now. Why? The smell of chemicals is making Grandma sick. We just started. What can I say, Scotty? She's feeling sick. Okay. Want to walk me home? Yeah. Good night, Mrs. Long. Thank you. Good night, Rhonda. What are you doing? I've done this whole wall in 11 and a half minutes. Good night, Mr. Law. Good night, Rhonda. Yes, Dad? Sorry if you were asleep. No, uh, what do you need? We can't find Mom's medicine. Oh, Ted, I think I saw it in the kitchen next to the refrigerator. Thanks. Is she sick? No, no, she's all right. Good night. Good night. Good night, dear. Grandpa! Oh, hi! Now, you can't say no, because they got everything ready. You go to the garage and get that ladder and bring it in here. Grandpa, you're not supposed to be handling all this stuff. This stuff? But these are the tools of my trade, buddy. I was handling these things before your father was born. Pre-Columbus. What? Anyway, you're supposed to take it easy. This is easy. The two of us can wrap it up in half an hour. Well, I'm a little tired now. What? I'm a little tired now. I just walked in the door. 
Can I relax for five minutes, please? Sure. Take a nap. I wouldn't bother you for the world. God forbid that your pesty old grandfather should bother you. Forget it. Just five minutes. Take an hour. Grandpa? Grandpa? Grandpa! 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 Scott. Sky. Don't be afraid. Okay. Oh, God. Grandpa, I'll be right back. Well, the attack brought on a heart block, which makes the pacemaker necessary. It's there, keeping the heart going at a steady 72 beats per minute. So now it's another healing process. He's out of danger. Yes, but he has to be watched very closely. But he's out of danger. I mean, it's over. Yes, but the heart was severely damaged. He'll wake up, won't he? And he'll breathe and move and talk. Um, uh, he is going to wake up, isn't he? Sure, Mom. Sure. Come on. You can speak to him tomorrow. Scotty? Scotty? Come on, honey. We're leaving. Do a good job or he'll nail you when he gets back. Don't say that if he's not coming home. Scott. I mean, you don't have to lie to me. He's not dying. He's going to make it and someday he'll be back here. I won't lie to you about him. Okay? Okay. Horror stories. We'll be careful. We'll find a good one. You wouldn't believe the abuse. There are good ones, right? We'll find one. I don't see why he can't come right from the hospital to us. He'll need rest, Mom. The doctor told you. It's the therapy, the, the diet, the, the close attention you'll need, the medication. The doctor's making a list of nursing homes he can recommend. Close by? Yes. C could we find one where I could live there, too, with him? It's a question of money, Mom. I couldn't afford that. I see. We'll find a good one.
That is what I told you about. It means if you don't like something, holler. Oh, he's good at that. <laughs> You'll get a copy of that in the room, Mr. Long. Carol, have you seen this? No. Take the nap now? No, I'll sit a while. Nice bright room, Ted. We'll find you a good roommate, Mr. Long. Hope she doesn't talk too much. Oh, good boy, Ted. Uh, man needs his rest. Oh, thanks. Oh. Nurse, take a look at this. What have you got there? Little pieces of history. Huh? Mr. Long, any trunks will be stored. Oh, he won't be staying that long. Uh, you might want to put that coin collection in our safe. Oh, no. This stays with me. He can keep it, can he? Of course he can. But I use this to teach history to my son and my grandson. It's just that we can't be responsible if it's stolen. Then I'll put it under my pillow, but it stays with me. Don't upset yourself. I think you should rest. Goodbye, Ted. Bye, Dad. It's the feisty ones who survive. It's not just health, it's an attitude. He's got his wit. Scared, though, behind all that. My mother is, too. They're not used to being separated. We love to see the family bring them in. It's not that common. Most of our patients don't have a home. Or at least one where they're welcome. Oh, we want them back, you know. Oh, could be as little as three months. Mr. Allen, telephone, please. Mr. Allen. Excuse me. I have to get the work, too. We'll just sit here a while, give them some time alone. I wish Wendy could have come. She says she'll visit next weekend. Without Al, I hope. There were places nearer to Mike's house, but they weren't very good. This isn't so far. Carol says she'll bring me every Tuesday and Thursday and one day every weekend. going to miss you. You keep out of trouble. I wish I was cooking for you. Oh, Emma, all I can eat is that saltless, bland stuff. Oh, my poor dear. Don't worry about it. I'm always remembering your stews and your omelets, and I can imagine, actually imagine them, and smell them and taste them. So, you still are cooking for me? I'll bring some fresh flowers from the garden next time. That's what you bring just by walking in here. Fresh flowers from the garden. was my right, isn't it? I 
wanted to have my meal sitting in that chair by the window, and he said no. Well, we're watching that cold of yours. You'll be up again in a few days. I can't even go to the bathroom. In a few days. How are you getting along with Mr. Case? Mr. Case isn't here. He's in Oklahoma raising corn. Mr. Case? Hi. Hello? Do you know where you are? Sure. Is it time to get up? I'm sorry I napped. I'll get back to the fields no. now. Mr. Case. Don't bother him. He's got planting to do. Mr. Case, you're in Parkford Nursing Home. It's Tuesday and there'll be a volunteer here later tonight. Would you like to be read to? Parkford? Why don't you leave him in Oklahoma if he's happy there? I'd rather make him happy here. Crows eating the corn, Charlie. Damn crows. If he loses his sense of time and place, he'll drift away. He'll disconnect himself. We won't be able to reach him. He'll be where he wants to be. He'll die. He's giving up on the present. That's the first step. We try not to let that happen. We try to give people a reason for living. Sometimes it's an interest, a, a hobby. Sometimes it's a good friend, a roommate, who'll help him stay in touch with the world. Is it time to get up? Is it? Charlie, you sold that farm 30 years ago. You don't have to get up now. And you don't have to worry about crows anymore. Well, that's something, isn't it? Sell it? I'll never sell it. Why should I sell it? Okay, Charlie. I wish you the best crop of corn you ever had. Thank you. Ted, sorry I'm late. Oh, the traffic. Where's Carol? She'll come. She's leaving us some time alone. We're not exactly alone, are we? I can tell by your eyes that cold is still with you. How do you feel? Well, I, I thought I'd be doing a lot better by now. You'll be better. You just have to mind that cold. Theodore. Oh, hello, Frank. I'd like you to meet my bride, Emma. Huh? I want you to meet my bride, Emma. Oh. How do you do? Terrible. Just awful. Uh, how are you? I I'm all right. We're going to play cards. Oh, no, thanks. Uh, Emma and I want to be by ourselves a while. Oh. Oh, sure. We're allowed to hold hands here. Sure, it won't make you too excited. What'll we do today? I'm just going to hold on to you. Until it's time for you to leave. When Rhonda was over. It was nice. Well, it's time now, so I'll go on ahead. See you soon, Dad. Bye, Carol. Be right there, Carol.
Won't be long, Ted. You'll be back with us. We'll all be together. Won't be very long. Ted? Don't make Carol late now. I'll be back Saturday. We'll have more time. All right? You mind that cold now? You keep covered. And uh, don't forget to... Sure. Bye, Ted. down some more. He says he'll turn it down and then he just barely touches the dial. Well, he really doesn't play it very often. Did you call your boss? Emma, I explained. I, I can't take any more time off now. Uh, we'll go on Wednesday. Maybe I can take you. I want to see him. He's got that cold. I'll know if he's sick. Mom, I'll take you. You can spend the weekend with us. Mr. Allen would call if there was anything to worry about. Oh, he doesn't know. Just try and understand, will you? She's scared. She and her man are over 70. She's afraid it's all ending. Is it? I don't know. Oh, I remember these books. You read me this Oz book chapter by chapter. Wendy, I don't want to stay here anymore. Seeing Dad twice a week, it just isn't enough. You're closer to the nursing home. Mom, if I came to stay with you, maybe you could take me there every day. Well, for an hour or so every day. Mom, I'll take you to visit him tomorrow. And you're welcome to spend the weekend. This is where you live now. Do you realize what's happening? He's leaving us, Wendy. I've got to be there. I gotta keep him from leaving us. Carol thinks that twice a week is being with him. Well, it isn't. That's the best they can do. They've, they've changed their lives around. They've made a place for you. What do you want? I want to stay with you now. No, you don't. You want things to be the way they were. You and Dad together. Things can't be that way. Will you listen to me? He's dying. The doctor says he's making progress. The doctor doesn't know. I know. I know. He needs me to hold him. Oh, I'll hold him so that he can't leave us. Please, Wendy, I'm asking for one hour a day. Hmm? An hour a day? Which hour, Mom? I work every day. After work. After work, I'm tired. My husband is tired. Wendy, I need you now. Al is going through a very bad time. He needs me now. Can't you understand? That? Let him understand. Can't he understand that this is a crisis? It's a time of crisis. Yes, for me too. You see, meanwhile, my life is going on. Do you want to hear about it? I don't want to lose my husband, all right? 
Now, he left me once. I never even told you. He's back, and we're trying to work things out. You can't come and live with us now. No. I'm saying no. I'm sorry, Mom. But my God, Mom, everybody's life has to go on. Mine, Mike's, Carol's, they have their problems and worries. Everybody's life can't revolve around visiting Dad. Now, the doctor says that he's not in danger. He's not. Well, you can leave me here tonight. Come on, Mom. Come and spend the weekend with us. I don't want to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that things can't be the way you want them. I'm sorry I can't help. I'm sorry about everything. Hey, I'm part of this too, right? There's been a change in plan. No, no change. If Wendy will have me, I'll stay the weekend with her. And I'll try not to be such a pain in the neck to my children. Promise? Let's go. Hey, where are you going? I'm not. Scott? I'm not going. What do you mean you're not going? I don't want to, Dad. Look, I got things I'd rather do, too. Hey. That's gonna come if you want, but get in the car. Scott. Dad, it's not having something else to do. I just don't want to see him. I know he's getting worse. He'll want to see you. Oh, I don't want to watch him die. He's not dying. I can't go now. Grandfather's getting worse. Oh, I'm sorry. He's in there because of me. He is not. He isn't. Now we want to wish a happy day to all our friends born in October. October. Mary Gambari. Oh. Tom Finley. Oh. It's a cold. Goes away and comes back. He never really shakes it. That's all it is? No. It's an attitude. He wants to get better. Maybe he's come to think it isn't possible. Now, you see, patients get weak and run down. They, well, they start to think it's all over. Now, they accept that. And that attitude can make the end come. No. He wants to come home. Well, then it's a matter of getting over his cold and getting back into his therapy program. Yeah. Starting from scratch? Mm -hmm. How many months? It's hard to tell. I told you we could afford five months. Now two are gone. What if it's six or eight more? Well, we could apply for welfare, 
sign over his Social Security to the government, go on Medicaid. How long? Indefinitely. Is he well enough to go out? Could he go out Sunday for a picnic? If it's a warm, sunny day, of course. Carol, where do you want to set up? I like that table over there, don't you? Come on. Well, let me carry the paper clips. Now, here's a good place. Just enough sun. Are you comfortable? Scott, bring the blanket. Blanket? I don't need any blanket. Never mind, Scott. I don't want you to be cold. I'm not. Take your hat off and get some sun on your face. Stop fussing. What are you staring at? It's so good to be here with you away from that place. Yes, it is. I can't wait till you come home to stay. I can't wait. I can't think that far ahead, Emma. Mom! Uh, yes? You better go ahead. Go ahead, dear. I'll be right back. Mom, did you have anything special in mind for these? Hey, Grandma, catch. Ah! Oh, darn. Remember that one? Civil War. You'd put that in your pocket and pretend you were fighting in the Battle of Gettysburg. How about that one? I used to pretend I was one of the Wright brothers. <laughs> History you can touch and feel. You always understood that. To other people, they're just coins. I can tell what they are just by feeling them. <laughs> I bet you can't. Well, sure I can. Here, try me. All right. Oh, well, that's a silver dollar. Uh, 1904S. <laughs> right. That's a buffalo nickel. 1933S. Right again. You see? You try it. Okay. Right now. Um, here. It's one of the cowboy coins. Sure. Scotty. I want you to keep these for me. D don't you... Don't you want them with you? No, I want you to have them. I, I don't need them anymore. No, no, you keep them. It's all I have left to give you. Crap, I, I don't want anything. I, I want you to get well, that's all. Sure. But you're the only one who cares about these things. No, I don't care about them. They're just coins. You keep them. Scott. Scotty. Dad, have a little walk, hmm? The sun feels so good. Well, thanks, Wendy, but Mike and I are going to go tramping through the park later. And... Okay. He wants you.
Oh, Mike. Ready for that walk? Sure. I'll get Wendy. Oh, that's all right. Uh, if, if, if you don't mind, Mike, uh, uh, I'd like to, to talk to you privately just at first, huh? You, you know Wendy. She never was much for romping through the hills. Dad. We never took her along. And I had something so special. I had a dad who'd get a free day and off we'd go, fishing, hiking, sharing a tent. Why didn't we ever take Wendy? She wanted to go. No, she didn't. She wanted to. See, Wendy and I both had Mom, but only I had you. Well, plenty of times the whole family would get together and... That's not the same thing. Those special trips. It was always you and your son. Dad, I, I love those times, and I thank you for them. But Wendy was home crying because she wanted to be with us. She never wanted to. Oh, Dad, of course you'd rather think that. It's easier to think that. Your mother never cared about roughing it with us. Wendy did. She was a little girl. Strong enough to climb trees and jump off garage roofs. She'd get black and blue trying to show you how tough she could be. How much of a son she could be. But I never loved her any less than I did you. Maybe not inside, Dad. But kids have to see it. Touch it. Oh, they don't know it's there. Wendy, you want to take that walk? I'm cleaning up now, Dad. Isn't Mike going? Wendy, will you walk with me? joke's not there. What? The joke's gone out of his eye. Oh, Mark. I was just tired. When we dropped him off at the nursing home, his color looked really good. He had a fine time. He did. Oh. He said you were supposed to take this home. Mom, why did you take it? What do you mean? I just I want him to have it. He wants you to keep it. show you something. Death is sneaky, isn't it? I feel like it's closing in, circling us. Doesn't have to. Doesn't have to.
average sort of day, Charlie. Rain? No. Need rain. What for? Your corn is tall, ready for picking. Ready? Yep. You tend to it. Me? Charlie Case. Charlie Case. Open your eyes. Look at me. This is Wednesday morning. It's morning. I'll get the doctor. Charlie. If you leave now, that's it. Forever. You know that, don't you? You know it. You grab onto my hand. Grab onto it! What's happening to you? It won't happen to me. Man who sits and stares out the window between visits doesn't exercise. It won't happen to me. Why not? Because I've got people out there who care about me. I've got Emma. Well, then. Physical therapy for you at two. I'll be there. Hello? Emma, it's me. Oh, hi. How's your day? Oh, an average day. A anything wrong? No. Say, do you remember Wally Negri? Remember him? Sure, why? Boy, was he strong. I remember him picking you up over his head. Oh, fooey. Wally could lift weights, but he never had an ounce of wit. <laughs> I like a man that gets a joke. <laughs> oh, and then there was Paul Fraser. Wow, what a smooth talker he was. Never liked him monopolizing the conversation like a phonograph record. I like a man that listens and has something to say when he talks. A man like you. Why are you remembering all these people? Oh, I just like to hear you tell me I'm the best. Well, you are. Emma, I love you. And, and we're going to be okay. We're going to be together. Yes. Yes, we will. Somehow or other, we're, we're going to make it. I know. Yes, I know. All right, then I'll, I'll see you tomorrow morning, huh? Yes, I'll see you. Bye. what I've been working on. What? You listen too, Mike. Okay. It's a way I can visit Ted every day. I take a cab to the bus stop downtown. Mom, 
and then a bus from there, and the cab costs six dollars plus eighty cent tip and twenty cents for the bus. That's seven dollars a day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Those are the days you don't take me. Twenty-one dollars a week is all it is. Did I tip the cab driver enough? Mom, I've got expenses coming up. Oh, no, no. Listen, I'm going to earn that $21. Earn it. How? I'm going to get a part-time job. Look, Mom, after I pay some bills, maybe... No, no. If I want to see Ted, it's my responsibility. Well, what could you do? Plenty of things. I saw eight possibilities in the paper. I'll get it. Mike? She's 72 years old. But she could do it. I mean, look at her. She's even looking younger. Salespeople want it. Now, uh, that, for instance, is... I have other things meant... marked... Uh, uh, telephone salesman. I could do that. And, uh... Florist! Now, who knows more about flowers than me? I found a patient here who had to give up an apartment. That's a hundred and a quarter a month on the ground floor. It's available. It's on the ground floor. And you know, in this city there are agencies that'll send around a, a meal for a dollar and a half, or a nurse, or, you know, volunteers. I wish I could tell you what you wanted to hear. Well, then say it, Jack. You could live a good five years with the right care. Probably more. You mean in here? Out there, the way you're talking, I couldn't guarantee you a year. Listen to me, Jack. I know that. But you're talking about the length of life. It's the quality of life that I'm concerned with. The quality. The thought of Emma and me being together, living and sharing whatever time there is left. You see, that's what keeps me going, not the pacemaker. I just want to buy him something light to read. You know how he loves adventure stories. Where was I? Oh, yes. They say we had someone younger in mind. Really? I can talk. I can make change. Oh, look at that now. He shouldn't move those flowers about so. Tell him, Emma. I should. No, I mean it. And see if he needs some part-time help. Oh, no, I, I wasn't. Go on. Plants have a hard time being moved, getting used to new places, like people. Pardon? Shouldn't move them about so much. There's too much sun on that fern, too. And that geranium's been misted, hasn't it? Yes, it has. You should never miss a geranium. Really? Are you sure? Who knows more about plants than me? First and last month's rent. No lease. That's the manager, Mr. Cosner. I see. First and last month. Okay. And $20 a month utilities. Mm -hmm. Well, that's 250 and 40. 290. But can you leave here? Yes. You and your wife alone in an apartment. Are, are, are you well enough? Well, I probably won't carry her over the threshold. <laughs> but even though it may cost me some years, Willie, it's what I want. What about your wife? Does she feel the same way you do? Oh, boy, excuse me. There's my son. Hi, Dad. Hi, Grandpa. Hi, boy. The ladies are in your room. We went looking for you. Bring them in here with you. It's nicer. Yeah, I'll get them. Oh, wait a minute, Mike. Uh, there's something in my mind I, I want to say. Uh, no matter what happens, don't ever say, I wish I could have done more for him. You know what I mean? What are you talking about? You look great. Yeah, but, but please, just don't ever say that. All right? Sure. You look, you look better, Grappa. You really do. I am better. I am. Uh, come here, Scotty. I, I want to talk to you. Um, 
Now, I'm sorry I have to do this. I know I gave you the coins, but you want them back? I want you to sell them for me. Sell them? I need the money. I'm checking out of here. You're checking out? How can you? Will they let you? I'll tie some sheets together and go out the window. Of course, they are. it's up to me, isn't it? I hope you don't mind. I feel awful about giving you something and then taking it back. Mine? Crap, I'll sell it. I bet you I could get a thousand bucks for it easy. Sure, I'll sell it. Well, keep it quiet, though, will you? I've got it all arranged. Don't tell Grandma, don't tell anybody. Okay. Right? Here they come. Did you say a thousand? Easy. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> I've got a table reserved uh, up at the other end of the room for the family. Why don't you all go up there while I say hello to this lady? <laughs> What's that I see in your eye? You and your jokes, Ted Long. If I could give my wife a present, what should it be? I want the time to sit together for hours and not say a word all that time. And fight when we want to fight. And always be in reach so we can touch when we want to touch. No booze? <laughs> oh, it did. Well, why not? <laughs> Mr. Cosner, uh, this is Ted Long again. Yes, uh, I have the money. First and last month. Cleaning fee? Well, that was never part of the deal. You clean it, I'll rent it. Yeah. When do I get the key? Good. We got a deal. Thanks. Bye. Are you going to take that walk with Mrs. Taka or not? You're not going to have Ted Long to push around much longer. Take it slow. Yeah. Um, I've got the pace now. Where are we going? Well, I'm going to get a present for my wife. I have some good news for her. Would you wait for me here, please? Uh, she's due in about two hours, and I want to be able to tell her I got you that flower all by myself. See? 